In maple syrup production, our most important resource is the sugar bush. Those are the trees that are producing our sap. So it's really important to keep those trees growing and healthy. In order to do that, we need to implement some form of active sugar bush management, some type of forestry. And that includes things like thinning. By maintaining a healthy forest, we grow our trees quicker, they produce more sap, but we also tend to open up the forest a little bit to make room for other crops. And that's what we're doing here, is demonstrating how other crops can be grown underneath the canopy of a thin sugar bush. My name is Aaron Whiteman. I'm the co-director of the Cornell Maple Program, and I'm the New York State Statewide Maple Specialist. We're here at the Arnott Teaching and Research Forest, which is one of Cornell's two maple research forests. At this location, we have a maple laboratory and we have a research sugar bush where we tap about 8,000 trees. Agroforestry is a really popular topic right now when we think about climate change. And that's because there are two advantages as the climate warms. One is that we're actually producing food in a system that sequesters carbon. Because we're promoting a healthy forest that's actively growing in the same space where we're producing food, it's pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. The other benefit is agroforestry systems, because they're integrated into a forest environment, are insulated from extreme climate events, things like drought and heavy rainfall events. So we established our agroforestry research plot one year ago. So most of the plants have just been put in the ground. They're just getting started. The goal of this project is twofold. One is to show that actively managing a sugar bush can have benefits in terms of maple syrup production. The other goal of the research is to show that we can grow other crops that generate income within the sugar bush. I was thinking that we should add another row of hazelnuts over here then. Some of the crops we're growing right now include black currants, blackberries, blueberries, lingonberries, service berries, aronia, and pawpaws. We also had some crops that we didn't actually plant in our plot. They were volunteers, they were growing there naturally, and we're looking at those as well for crop production. So this is the tail end of the elderberry harvest. This is American black elderberry. It has both medicinal and culinary uses, and we're harvesting it to make some maple elderberry jelly. So we're trying to develop products that utilize both maple syrup and other ingredients grown right here in the sugar bush. Most of our maple stands are second growth stands that grew after the timbering days in the early 1900s. So they're really reaching maturity and they need to be thinned to maintain forest health and also to create the opportunity for the next generation of maple trees to grow. In this study, we removed about half of the stand. So the residual stand, what we left behind is about half of what was there originally. And that created a lot of openings in the canopy, which allowed a lot of sunlight to penetrate the canopy and reach the forest floor. One of the benefits of thinning a forest the way we have is that it creates a multi-layered stand, so vertical structural diversity. When you look at our forest, you'll see a wall of green in front of you. So that means that they're growing things occupying all the vertical space. And that's really advantageous, not only for forest health, but as wildlife habitat. The populations of a lot of forest breeding birds, like thrushes and warblers, are declining. And that's because there's a lack of quality habitat. By creating snags and adding down woody material and creating structural diversity, we help those bird species by creating the habitat that they need. It's clear at this point with climate change that we need to innovate new food production systems, systems that are sustainable and resilient to a changing climate. Forest grown foods have a strong role to play in that. That includes maple syrup and other tree saps, as well as agroforestry crops. 
So we expect to see a lot more of this type of research in the future.